torrenting sort of gets this bad rap as something you only do if you want to do something illegal, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. In fact, a lot of FOSS projects actually provide a torrent download alongside their direct website download as a way to sort of mitigate the cost of actually maintaining the server and offloading that to the people who actually really want to support the project. And a lot of the really popular projects that do this are known about, so things like say Arch Linux and Godot and things like that, those do have torrent downloads and most people who are interested in those applications probably already know about that, but there's a lot more out there that actually do support it and it's kind of hard to work out what actually does. So today we're looking at an applicate. So today we're looking at a website actually called Foss Torrent. And basically this is a website that aims to sort of bring all of that information into one place. Now obviously it doesn't have every possible Foss application out there that does have a torrent download available, but it does have a really good selection of tools and ones that you may not actually realize do have torrent downloads available. But if something that you do support isn't currently on the website, you can actually get in contact with the maintainers through places like Facebook, Twitter, Discord, things like that, and actually get it added onto the site. The website itself isn't really that crazy. It's pretty straightforward how it actually works. So along the top here, we have some featured applications. Right now it's Reborn OS, Sparky Linux, FreeCAD, uh, Po OS, I've never heard of that one, Zorin OS, Blender, obviously I've heard of Blender, and that is all of them for now. We have a search bar, so if you want to go search for something like, say, I don't know, Arch Linux, then give that a second. There we go, we have Arch Linux, we have Archman, Amarok, so on and so forth. And if you know what's on the site, that's the easiest way to go and find it. And then below that, we have basically the newest release. So right now, it's things like Live Rhizo, Battle for West North, so on and so forth. But it's also broken down into categories as well. So let's go into the distributions category first. So this section is broken down into distro families, and they are actually doing something really helpful for developers who have no idea how torrents actually work. So as they say here, we can create torrents for your project, seed it and advertise it for you, and they're apparently going to do it completely for free. I have no idea how I'd actually go about making a torrent. I should actually look into that for a video. That actually would be kind of cool. But if you're not the sort of person who has any interest in looking into it for yourself, that is something really generous they can help you with. Let's scroll down a bit and see what we have. So off to the right hand side here, we have all of the different families that are available. So for example, there are 12 distros right now based on Arch Linux that have torrents available. And all the way down, we have all of these different distros in here. There are even various forms of BSD in here as well. I think all of the main BSD distros that people care about, yeah, all of the main ones do seem to have torrents available. And then if we go into one of the distro pages, it will actually show us things like what the distro is, and some of them do actually have system requirements on here. On this one, it doesn't seem to be available. Let's go over to, I think the Arch one does have that. So all the way back up here, Arch Linux. Uh, yes, here we go. So with a desktop environment, it recommends these specifications. Without a desktop environment, it recommends these specifications. But if you're running a system from the past 10 years, you probably have those anyway. And then right at the bottom of the page, it has the magnet link and the torrent file available. One problem with the way this site is structured is because they're linking to the magnet and torrent file on the website itself, the link it has here may not always be up to date. I would like to have a third button here that actually takes me to the project website with the place that the torrent file is actually located on the official website just in case it might be slightly out of date. I think that would be a better way to handle it, but having these links right here is definitely going to be convenient. It seems like a lot of things have actually been improved with the website since I actually planned the video. So for example, under the software tab right here, Back when I was originally planning this, they actually had the categories down here, but no categories along the side. So while you could go and scroll through the page and find the section you're looking for, you couldn't go and easily jump to it like you could over on the distro page. So on this one, we have things like, say, Audacity, FreeCAD, LibreCAD, Sweet Home 3D. I've never actually heard of that one. Uh, we have Clonezilla, Gparted. Uh, what else do we have? GNU, Cache, Blender. I actually didn't know Blender did have a torrent version. That is really cool to see. Darktable is also a really useful application as well. 
And there's a bunch of other really useful applications on this page as well. I'm not gonna talk about all of them, but I'd recommend coming and checking this out for yourself. And the last one we have is the games tab. So while there's not that many game projects on here, because there's not really that many open source and FOSS games that are actively being worked on, at least to a fairly decent extent, the ones we do have here are definitely cool. So there are game engines here as well, like Godot, GDevelop, and Phaser. But there's also things like, say, Urban Terror and Xenotic. Xenotic, I've played on stream a ton of times. It's an absolutely amazing game. Urban Terror is also really, really fun. I haven't played it on stream yet, but I absolutely need to do so. And there are other things like, say, Super Tux and Super Tux Cart. Now, I didn't know Super Tux actually existed, and I kind of wish I never did anyway. So I think that's enough talking about what's actually here. I think you basically get the idea. There is something else I do want to talk about though, and that is why I would recommend using a torrent when it is available for an application like this. When you download from a centralized server, in most situations, this is going to be putting a direct cost on the development team. Now, a lot of applications do get distributed from say, GitHub and places like that, but when an application has its own site, so Blender, GIMP, Arch Linux, Ubuntu, things like this, they're the ones that are actually hosting that file. And for projects that are supported by donations, which to be completely frank, is basically all of them except for like Mozilla, who is funded by Google, helping them reduce their costs by any way possible is always going to be a good thing. While setting up the initial seeding is going to put a cost on the actual team themselves, if it's a popular application like Arch Linux, Ubuntu, Blender, GIMP, anything like that, once people know that there's a torrent available, the community is able to actually support it themselves and they're actually able to re-upload the file so that new users who are trying to download it can actually go and do so. Even if it's still a fairly small project, they never really gets to the point where they can completely pull out of actually seeding the project themselves. Even so, it's gonna make each download that actually happens cheaper than if they were just hosting it themselves. And if you're someone who doesn't have the money to directly monetarily support a project, which I fully understand, there is a lot of people out there who just don't have any expendable income, especially right now, supporting a project through its torrent is a really easy way to go and do so, because even if you don't have that expendable income, a lot of people do have really high data caps, or if you're in Australia, you're very likely to have just an infinite cap, and if you don't have an infinite cap, you're probably not using all of your data cap anyway, so you can actually go and donate some of that data in the form of seeding a torrent. You know, as long as your ISP and government doesn't just think that torrent equal bad and instantly shut it down. And another problem with doing direct downloads, which I know isn't going to affect a lot of you guys who are in the US and Canada, is that a lot of the time when you're downloading an application from a US server, there's going to be some serious bottlenecks, especially in places like Australia. So by actually having that torrenting option available, when you try to download the application, it's just normally going to download so much faster than could possibly be done downloading from the US server because there's very likely going to be people who are actually seeding the application who are located much closer to you. That does sort of come with a flip side problem though, where if it's not a very popular application and didn't have many people seeding it to begin with, or is really popular, but has way more leeches than seeders, that it's probably going to end up being way slower than the direct download. So I do like having the direct download there as a backup option when you can't do anything else. However, I find that most people involved with FOSS tend to be fairly generous people and that's not really an issue I've run into with many projects. But when the option is available, I will try to use the torrent instead. So if you do end up torrenting an application, I would highly, highly recommend at least seeding however much you downloaded. So whatever the size of the file is, but I would also recommend going more than that just to make sure there's more seeders on the network than there was before. In my case, I have an unlimited data cap, so it doesn't really matter for me, but I get that in the US, data caps are still a thing for some reason. I don't understand why. So usually what I'll do if I download something like, say, Arch Linux, is I will seed it, and then I'll just leave it running overnight, and then however much it seeds is however much it seeds, which will always be at least double or triple what I downloaded. And seeding overnight does really help out if you have, say, a really low download and upload speed, 
and running a torrent just throughout the day is going to basically saturate your network. I know that seems kind of weird in 2021, but I know there's a lot of people who still have really terrible connections and I feel kind of bad for you. In that case, if you do it overnight while everyone is sleeping, it's not really a big deal if your network is saturated. Also, another really nice advantage, which doesn't apply to the torrent file, but does apply to the magnet link, is that if the website for the project is down, maybe it's getting some upgrades, or they went over their data cap, or whatever reason that a server would be down, even in that situation, you can still go and download the application just fine if you have access to the magnet link. Obviously, with the torrent file, because the torrent file is actually stored on the server that you're probably trying to connect to, that's a little bit harder, but every torrent application supports magnet link, so it's not exactly a problem. Luckily, in Australia, whenever there is some issue related to torrenting that does sort of arise, the ISPs always take the path of least resistance to appease the government, basically just doing things like a, a DNS block, which you can get around by just changing your DNS server, or blocking a port, which you can always change by changing the port. They don't actually do anything here which would take any effort, which would actually take some effort to get around. Which is certainly a nice change of pace for being in Australia. So if you want to go and seed your FOSS application or various other FOSS applications out there but don't really have the network capacity to do it at home, maybe try setting up a Linux server over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. I think that's going to be basically everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monazza, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe, Star, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be basically everything for me, and I'm out.